Uh, what we're going to do uh, today is start off uh, exploring this, this wonderful subject of spiritual gifts or the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we want to first of all begin by talking about the person of the Holy Spirit himself. And I want to emphasize here that the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, is a person. It's interesting the, the, the words he used for another helper. It's the Greek allos parakletos. Allos is another, but it means another of the same kind. The Holy Spirit has come to be to you everything Jesus would be to you if Jesus was there right next to you. But it all starts off with your relationship with the Holy Spirit. So fellowship is not just being always sober. It simply means, and I can use three English words to describe that word, communion or fellowship. Uh, uh, in English, we would say it's fellowship, meaning I'm sharing everything. What I is on my heart, I'm telling him. What's on his heart, he's telling me. It's partnership. We do things together. And also means friendship. I mean, we are just having a good time together. We are being good friends. There's a relationship that's being built. So when you look at 1 Corinthians, and I'm just quickly summarizing, you, you see these are the things he addresses. In chapter 1 to 4, Paul is addressing division and strife. In chapters 5 and 6, he addresses the issue of sexual immorality in the church. He, that's a problem there. There are some internal conflicts, and so he addresses that in chapter 6. Uh, the whole issue of marriage. They are wondering, you know, how to do marriage, and so he's addressing that in chapter 7. And um, they're wondering about food offered to idols. Is it right to eat? So in chapter 11, he addresses the issue of head covering. Should women cover their heads when they all come together for worship? Uh, he also addresses the how to partake in the Lord's Supper in chapter 11. When you come together, uh, this is how you should do the Lord's Supper. In chapters 12 through 14, he's addressing the issue of the gifts of the Spirit. So again, so the context is, Paul is addressing how the gifts must be exercised in the context of a local church gathering. So wherever you go, because the Spirit of God is with you, the gifts of the Spirit will operate. So when you are in the shopping mall, Holy Spirit can move through you. So let's pick up again now verse 1. Paul says, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. I want to highlight that word concerning spiritual, meaning these are non-carnal. They're not natural. They are supernatural. And he says, I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren. God does not want his people to be ignorant concerning these things. There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. Diversities, meaning there are varieties. There are many different kinds. Not just one, but many is the emphasis. There are diversities of gifts. The word gifts is charisma. Root word charis, meaning grace. These are gifts of grace. Meaning these are not earned. Verse 5. There are diversities of administrations. It's the Greek word diakonia. Which simply means ministry, services. There are different services. But it is the same Lord who is being served. So the diversities of activities. But it is the same God who works all in. All. The word activities, or in the King James, it says operations. It is a Greek word, energia, which always is used in the New Testament to refer to divine energy. So the gifts make the Spirit visible. The Holy Spirit is the owner of these gifts, not me. We are just channels. And He can operate, or He can release all nine gifts through every believer. In the New Testament, we three three categories of spiritual Gifts. The gifts of the Spirit are given to all believers. All believers have access to this. The gifts of the Spirit are given for us to serve one another. But then there are membership gifts. Romans 12, 4 through 6 talks about this, or 6 or 9 talks about this. The membership gifts has to do with your place in the body of Christ. And then there are ministry gifts. The ministry gifts, there are five of these the apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist, Ephesians 4 and verse 11. These, Paul says, that Christ has given to some. That means it's not given to everyone. He distributes as he wills. He is very willing. He's here for that purpose, the Holy Spirit. But for you and me as believers, we must earnestly desire the gifts. And desire spiritual gifts. Desire it. So it's not wrong to say, God, I want. God, I want to see these things flowing through my life. It's not wrong. He told us to do it. He told you to desire these gifts. For the benefit of people. Because you want to help somebody. You want to serve somebody.